The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Our biggest mistake as a people was that we forsook the Most High for the idols of the heathens. Throughout the scriptures, you can read how our ancestors worship and serve other gods. You can also read in the scriptures how the Most High plead with his people. The Most High gave his people multiple chances to repent. Every time the Israelites repented, they had the help of the Most High. Keep in mind, Israelites, when our ancestors repented wholeheartedly and when true repentance occurred, the Most High helped his people. When the Israelites disobeyed and allowed the spirit of idolatry to entice them and led them astray, the Most High gave his people into the hands of their enemies. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. The recurring pattern of the Most High, giving his people into their enemies' hands and saving his people after they've repented and humbled themselves can be read throughout the scriptures. The hope of the Most High for his people is that the Israelites would stop forsaking him for useless idols that cannot help them. In addition, the Most High want his people to live a glorious life in eternity with him just as he wanted from the beginning before the fall of Adam and Eve. If the Most High didn't want to save his creation, he wouldn't go to great length to save his creation from death by coming up with a solution that gives his creation the opportunity to receive salvation. The sentence on the Satans and all who follow them is eternal death. The Most High don't want this judgment for his people and all the righteous. Therefore, he raised many prophets to lead his people. Throughout the generations, the Most High plead with his people to return to him and to serve him. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go. And proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger for ever. The scripture clearly state in the book of Malachi that from the day of our fathers, the Israelites have turned away from the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. Until this day, the Most High is pleading with this generation to return to him. Despite being in the great awakening, some Israelites allow the God of this world to blind their eyes. Too many Israelites are focused on the beast system and their idols. Instead of repenting and returning to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, a lot of Israelites focus on what's happening in this world instead of what is happening with their spirit. Your spirit is the real you. The pattern of the Most High chasing a rebellious people to return and serve him has been going on from the beginning. The Israelites have a rebellious nature even until this day, despite the great awakening taking place in our generation. The root cause to rebellion is witchcraft and idolatry. The book of 1 Samuel said the sin of rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is like iniquity and idolatry. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. The Israelites struggle with the sin of idolatry and witchcraft. 
a lot of Israelites continue to serve the idols of the heathens in the awakening. They only pretend to serve the Most High. A lot of Israelites left Rome physically. However, their heart is sold out to Rome. Spiritually, Rome dictates their journey with the Most High. The evidence is the fact that they can't shake the idol God called Jesus Christ. A lot of Israelites have forsaken the Father for the Son God. This idol haven't done anything for them since his birth in the New Testament. The New Testament idol said he took your sins away, yet you're still being judged for your sins. Israelites, have you recognized the patterns? The Most High has no issue helping his people whose heart is perfect towards him and that serve him in the spirit and in truth. Israelites, if you don't have the help of the Most High and you've repented, you need to make sure an idol is not standing between you and the Most High. If there's no evidence of the Most High in your life, you're far from him and your sins have caused a separation between you and the Most High. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. The sin of idolatry has been the downfall to the indigenous black people as a whole. Fast forward to today, many Israelites believe the sin of idolatry doesn't exist. Some Israelites believe because the Great Awakening is happening, the Israelites have returned. It's a very small population of Israelites that have returned to serve the Father only. Majority of Israelites continue to worship and serve the Son God as their Lord and Savior. Even if you change his name, he's still an idol. Some Israelites believe Baal, Malik, and the many other gods our ancestors have served throughout their generations no longer exist. That is the biggest misconception out there. Israelites, the idols that our ancestors have served in the past continue to exist until this day. The reason you don't recognize Baal, Malik, and the many others, religion has done a phenomenal job of concealing the identity of these ancient gods. The deity Baal continued to be worshipped until this day. Baal has concealed his identity under the idol God called Jesus Christ. The Most High said a day will come when you will stop calling him Baal. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Baalai, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. To those who don't know, Baal was said to be a god of fertility and Baal was a god of rain and storms. Another identity Baal had was that he was also the sun god. The heathens incorporated their Phoenician god into the scriptures in the Bible. Instead of them referring to him as the sun god, they refer to him as the son of God. Another definition for Baal is Lord. Jesus is known as Lord. According to the heathens, you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. A lot of people accepted Baal as their Lord and Savior. The Greek god called Zeus is the same as Baal. Zeus' name resembled the Lord and Savior, Jesus. When you spend time in the presence of the Most High, he will reveal the truth to you by his Spirit. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Israelites, this is why you must walk in the Spirit. The God of the Bible that many Israelites worship and serve is Jesus. This generation and previous generations cry out to Jesus. There's no other God the Israelites worship by the majority other than Jesus Christ. Since the birth of Jesus over 2,000 years ago, the Israelites in the majority have worshiped and served Jesus. Our ancestors worshiped Jesus as well. They didn't know him as Jesus. They knew him as Baal. Because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtoreth. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. This is why you must know what you worship and serve. You truly need to dissect the doctrines of Rome. 
Jesus is the God many Israelites believe is the Most High, the Father, when he came in the flesh. If the Most High said his people are giving his glory to another God, who is the God that stole the Most High's glory? Israelites, open your heart to the Father and let him reveal his truth to you. The scripture said you have to put on the whole armor of the Most High to stand against the wiles of the devil. Whenever truth is spoken in the awakening, instead of Israelites who say they know the Father and serve the Father, seek the Father for confirmation, they come up with all sorts of excuses on to why they are not serving Baal. They will come up with some sort of interpretation to the scriptures to prove that they never serve other gods, but the Most High. Despite idolatry and witchcraft running deep into the Israelites' bloodline. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made the molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used a divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Ever since the Most High has been speaking to the remnant to return to him through this channel, as well as the identity of the true deliverer to his people and all the righteous, this truth has ignited a fire in the awakening. The truth has a way of getting under the skin of the people whose hearts are sold out to Rome and its idols. There are many pretenders in the awakening. Israelites, if you ever want to be delivered, you have to acknowledge your iniquities. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Israelites, you will never experience what it's like to be free from spiritual bondage if you have an idol as a God. Deliverance will never happen for you if you serve idols. The remnant will get it and the remnant will return. The second mistake we made as a people was to allow our enemies to indoctrinate us. The doctrines of devils taught to us have been the source that Satan's used to keep us in bondage. The doctrines of devils are used to reestablish the evil covenants the Israelites and the indigenous black people have made with the idols of the heathens. The Most High can anoint many Israelites to assist his people in the awakening. The doctrines from religion have such a hold on our people that they are willing to put their salvation and eternity on the line for these doctrines of devils. The truth that is being revealed in the awakening has exposed the falsehood in the doctrines of devils from religion by the heathens the Most High said never to put over you as leaders. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. As you can see, Israelites, the head leaders of the synagogue of Satan that oversees all religion are not Israelites. The fact that we as a people sat down in the heathens' religious institutions throughout our generations to be taught by them was forbidden by the Most High. A people who don't have the spirit of the Most High cannot teach the word of the Most High. The head leaders of the religious institutions that created the doctrines of devils cannot receive the spirit of the Most High because the truth is not in them. In addition, they do not know the Father. The head leaders of the synagogue of Satan serve the Satans, not the Most High. How can they teach the truth of the Most High's words if the truth is not in them? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Israelites, the time has come for you to use common sense. I have seen in and out of the awakening of non-Israelites leading and teaching Israelites about the word of the Most High. The reason the non-Israelites believe they had the authority to do so, a lot of rebellious Israelites are giving their glory to the strangers and non-Israelites. The rebellious Israelites have created many false doctrines in the awakening to give their enemies their inheritance. Most Israelites refuse to be set apart. If the fear of the Most High was truly in the Israelites that proclaimed they have repented and returned to the Father, they would fear the Most High and take heed to his instructions.
The awakening have shown that many Israelites are very rebellious and don't fear the Most High. That is why they lack knowledge and being tossed around by the doctrines of devils that are plaguing the awakening and in religion. The scripture said to fear the Most High is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Only a foolish person despise wisdom and instructions from the Most High. Many Israelites need to seek deliverance from the spirit of rebellion. The spiritual wickedness in high places out of the head leaders of the synagogue of Satan is not your brothers and sisters, nor are they of the Israelite bloodline. The head leaders of the synagogue of Satan that design the doctrines every church in and out of religion teach come from the other species of mankind. Why are you following their doctrines? The Most High said, you should not put these people or anyone who is not of your bloodline over you. Today, many Israelites will gladly sit under a heathen to learn the truth of the Most High's words. Let me remind you who their father is. The scripture said their father is the father of lies and there's no truth in their father. The sooner you acknowledge that there's no truth in them, you will no longer allow the doctrines of the heathens to become a snare to you. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. This series and many other messages, as well as the condition of our people, revealed to me that many Israelites do not seek the face of the father, nor do they have a personal relationship with the father. Most Israelites live through other Israelites that have a personal relationship with the Father. If the Israelites in the awakening were seeking the face of the Father, the spirit of confusion wouldn't have a stronghold in the awakening. Each assembly or Israelite group wouldn't have a different name for the Most High. Everyone would be on one accord. Unfortunately, this is not the case in the awakening. That is why I can see and many others outside of the awakening can also see that the fear of the Most High is lacking in the awakening. This is why so many Israelites are perishing for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. A lot of Israelites don't know how the Most High operates. That is why they're being tossed around in religion as well as in the awakening. Israelites, I guarantee if you spend time in the presence of the Most High and allow the Father to order your steps, everything that is coming against the kingdoms of this world will not phase you. The Most High will prepare you as well as give you instructions on what you should do concerning your life. In the beginning of the Israelite bloodline, Jacob and his family dwelled in the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan was the promised land the Most High gave to Jacob and his descendants. Jacob dwelled there knowing that one day his children would possess the land of Canaan. When the Most High wanted Jacob to move from the land of Canaan to Mizraim, the Most High came to Jacob our father in the spirit realm to instruct him to go to Mizraim to live. The Most High said to Jacob that from Mizraim, he would become a great nation and he would unite with Joseph there. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again, and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. Jacob, our father, did not depend on the personal relationship his father Isaac and grandfather Abraham had with the Most High to serve and follow the Most High. Jacob had his own personal relationship with the father. Jacob offered a sacrifice to the Most High when he reached Beersheba, seeking guidance from the Most High. To the Israelites looking for deliverance from unclean spirits, what sacrifice have you offered to the Most High? Have you seek his face for instructions? When the Most High came to Jacob in the spirit realm to give Jacob instructions on what he should do, 
Jacob knew the voice of the father and he followed the Most High's instructions. Jacob depend on the Most High to guide him throughout his life. Every Israelite should aim to have a personal relationship with the Most High like Jacob our father. Jacob allowed the Most High to order his steps. Israelites, do not let the Satans as well as men order your steps. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Most High. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Israelites, you're learning about the spirit realm because the Most High is communicating with you there as well as giving you instructions. The Most High will let you know when the time has come for you to move. The Most High will let you know when the time has come to prepare. The Most High will instruct you on where to start on your journey to deliverance. It's extremely important for you to allow the Most High to order your steps. Israelites, when you begin to recognize the patterns in our bloodline, you will know exactly what you need to do to find help from the Father. As long as you obey the commandments, statutes, and laws of the Most High, you will have the help of the Most High. Anyone who follows the laws and statutes of the Most High will not live a lawless life. Sin is breaking the laws of the Most High. If you're honoring the laws, then sin has no power over you. The Most High now has the freedom to do His will in your life. There's nothing restricting the Most High from helping you. The Most High said He is married to the Israelites. He will keep pleading with His people to acknowledge their iniquity, repent and return to Him to be at peace and be delivered from all evil powers working against them. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Israelites, we can read throughout the Bible of how the Most High destroyed the enemies of our people when they humbled themselves. When our ancestors served the Father, the Most High would cause the enemies that gathered against his people to turn on themselves. The Most High would unleash his army to fight against the enemies of his people when their hearts was perfect towards him. There's a story in the scriptures about Balaam and Balak. Balak wanted to curse the Israelites. Balak, the king of Moab at that time, hired Balaam to curse the Israelites. During that time, the Israelites served the Most High in the spirit and in truth. There was no wickedness found in Israel at that time. Because our ancestors served the father, Balaam was unsuccessful in cursing our ancestors. Instead of a curse, the Most High blessed his people because of their faithfulness towards him. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Israelites, if you're seeking deliverance from spiritual bondage, follow the example of our ancestors when they served the Father. No devil will be able to attach itself to you if your heart is perfect towards the Most High. You will have the help of the Father and access to his army if you serve him in the spirit and in truth. Israelites, the workers of iniquity know who they can attack and who they should stay away from. The workers of iniquity know when the presence of the Most High is strong on his people. The workers of iniquity know that there will be serious consequences when they attack a person that had the Most High on their side. None of their witchcraft and sorcery will work against you if you serve the Most High. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? The reason so many Israelites are walking around with legions of devils, like the man in the tomb, their heart is not perfect towards the Most High. Some Israelites serve the Most High in pretense. In addition, a lot of Israelites serve idols instead of the Father. Majority of Israelites of today are idolaters. A lot of them have been deceived to believe they are serving the Father in religion and in the awakening. In reality, they are serving the modern day version of Baal and the many other ancient gods from the past. You will not find deliverance from demonic oppression if an idol stands between you and the Father. Israelites, it will not happen. I see a lot of Israelites in the awakening that want deliverance. 
but they don't know what to do about Yeshua. Only the Most High, the Father, can open your eyes to see Yeshua, a.k.a. Black Jesus, for who he truly is. I've passed that phase in my journey. You have to get over that hump as well to elevate on your spiritual journey from glory to glory. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Until you dethrone the idols that have first place in your heart, you will experience short-lived deliverance. A lot of Israelites experience short-lived deliverance. In the last two chapters about deliverance, you learn what deliverance is. You learn that spiritual warfare is an ongoing battle. The spirit realm will give you insight to prophecy and what is happening presently. In order to be delivered, you have to close the doors that give the unclean spirits, the workers of iniquity, and the Satans the opportunity to enter and to entice you. When you give the kingdom of darkness the opportunity to enter any area of your life, the kingdom of darkness will come with legions to infect your entire life. The unclean spirits will not limit themselves to the area you allow them to enter. Israelites, it's extremely important that you don't give the Satans an opportunity. Neither give place to the devil. We know that the heathens have altars scattered throughout the beast system. The heathens have altars built to their idol god in their establishments. They even pay homage to their idols in their business logos and company names. As consumers, we enter these places in ignorance, not knowing what the heathens are doing behind closed doors. When we enter the heathens' establishments and do business with them and support their products, we unknowingly give the Satans an opportunity to tempt us with their abominations. You learn all of this in the Spirit Realm series, chapters 1 to 3. Israelites, there are other ways you open the doors to the kingdom of darkness to give them the opportunity to tempt you and cut short your deliverance. Every time you have a lustful thought and you entertain those thoughts, you give marine spirits an opportunity to tempt you. The same goes for every unclean thoughts the Satans and unclean spirits put into your mind. When you act on those thoughts or entertain them without repenting, you've opened the door to the kingdom of darkness to reestablish the evil covenants and place a stronghold on your life. Israelites, this is why you must cast down the wicked imaginations. The scripture said in the book of Matthew that if you lust after a woman, you've committed adultery with her. The scripture said, as a man thinketh, so is he. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Israelites, do you see how easily you can give unclean spirits access unknowingly? The scriptures instruct us to cast down all the wicked imaginations that enter your minds. A lot of Israelites fall short when they entertain the devil. For example, let's say there's a lot of drama on social media. You go and follow the drama. In the mix of you watching and entertaining the drama, you open the door to the spirit of division, slander, gossip, and many other unclean spirits to enter your life. You thought you were an innocent bystander. However, while you were entertaining the drama, you began to form your opinion on the matter. Now you feel as if you have to choose a side. Some of you share the drama with your followers and give the spirit of gossip and slander the opportunity to enter your life. Israelites, don't partake with them. When you entertain the devil, you become a partaker in their iniquity. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Drama that is childish and minor disputes can amplify because Israelites are sharing and involving themselves by entertaining the foolishness. Israelites, evil altars are not the only gateway the unclean spirits use to enter your life. You open the doors to devils when you entertain them. You have to be cautious of what you let enter your spirit. A lot of Israelites go back into bondage when the devil return and bring other devils more wicked than itself. Also, many Israelites open the door to unclean spirits when they entertain the devil. The kingdom of darkness have many ways to pollute your life. That is why you have to keep the armor of the Most High on to stand against the wiles of the devil. Living on a battlefield means you have to be vigilant because the Satans prowl around like a roaring lion looking for who they can devour. Be sober 
Be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. If you're looking to be delivered, you have to be vigilant and alert. You have to be mindful of what you entertain. Some of you are opening the doors to devils unawares. Israelites, the Most High always wants to help his people. The Most High doesn't find pleasure in his creation suffering. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? The Most High said he is married to us. If you pray and you didn't get the result that you want, sometimes the Most High will show you in the spirit realm the area in your life you need to pay attention to, the area where the door is open and the enemy is entering, a symbol to look for in the spirit realm that is revealing the location to where the intruder is entering is when you dream of a closed door opening. When you see a door open in the dream and nothing passed through the door, the Most High is showing you where you left the door open to unclean spirits to enter. If the door that is open is the door to your bedroom, then the dream or vision can symbolize the entryway is an intimate personal area in your life. Other symbols to look for is when the person, the animal, or whatever object you see appear extremely tiny. If you see an animal or an adult person appearing smaller than the average size, this could symbolize a new devil. The Most High is showing you where the enemy is hiding in your life. In a good dream, a tiny animal or person could mean you're overpowering the devil and his hold on your life is decreasing. Israelites, the road to deliverance is not just engaging in spiritual warfare by praying and fasting. Your behavior and the way you think has an effect on maintaining your deliverance. It's important to know how the devil come against you so that you may not be deceived and led astray. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. The Most High can show you the areas in your life you need to repent and work on to find deliverance. In the spirit realm, the Most High will show you everything you need to know about the powers working against you. If your ways please the Most High, He will even reveal the work of iniquity attacking you in the spirit realm. Pay attention to the people in the background in your visions and dreams. The familiar face in the background usually tries to go unnoticed. Sometimes you can hear the voice of your enemy and not see their face. The kingdom of darkness have many ways to come against you. The Most High have multiple ways to lead you out of the traps of your enemies. The provision and access the Most High made available is only for the righteous remnant. Israelites, your spiritual journey is far more advanced than what religion have taught you. It's not all about a savior that did all the work for you. You have work to do, especially if you want to maintain your deliverance. Israelites, when you spend time in the presence of the Most High, the Father, the Most High will begin to open your eyes to see the falsehood of the doctrines taught to you. If you have fallen short, the Most High will show you the areas in your life you need to pay attention to in the spirit realm. Don't be afraid to allow the Father to direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Israelites, just because you left religion and no longer fellowship with any other religious institution, it doesn't mean you were delivered. Just because you're a former pastor in religion and the Most High has awakened you to the truth, it doesn't mean you're in good standing with the Father, simply because you heard the call. After you heard and accept the call, you now have to repent, denounce, and break the evil covenants you established in the beast religion and beast culture. Don't think your sins were taken away when the Most High wake you up out of your slumber. The Most High wake you up to save your life. Now you have to humble yourself, repent, and return to the Father to find forgiveness for all your sins. The awakening is to give Israelites and all of Adam and Eve's descendants that took heed to the call in this generation the opportunity to repent to find forgiveness of sin. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. The time has come for the people of the Most High to fear the Father. You were awakened at such a time as this to humble yourself. If you pay attention, a lot of Israelites in and out of the awakening need to humble themselves. 
If they truly took the time to examine themselves, the remnant would be rejoicing and praising the Father. You wouldn't have time for division and strife. Israelites, the time has come for you to unload the heavy demonic load you have been carrying around for years. Take advantage of the knowledge the Most High is making available in the awakening to find deliverance from demonic oppression. As you humble yourself and spend time in the presence of the Father, the peace of the Most High will be with you everywhere you go. The Satans, the workers of iniquity, the unclean spirits will have no choice but to flee. They cannot stand in the presence of a holy God that is with you. Israelites, utilize the time the Most High is giving you in the awakening wisely. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my saviour. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies, 